Right, so just to let you know, I am recording this because I tried recording it yesterday and, um, well, it wasn't very successful. Can uh, pardon? Can what it can hear what everybody's saying, yes. So when you do give your responses, could you be quite loud and clear? I'm going to go through the poem, but you're going to take me through the poem. So how do we know it's a sonnet? Because it's got 14 lines, Owen. And what else does a sonnet have? Ben? So it has iambic pentameter. What else does it have? How do you split a sonnet up? So we get an octet, the first eight lines. Can't see what I'm writing there. And a sestet. And what separates... I think my... Hang on, that might be better. What separates the octet from the sestet? What's it called? And ours comes here. Anyone begins with a V? A volta. What does a volta do in a sonnet? Yeah, yeah. Um, some sonnets, the volta is quite dramatic. In others like this one, it's less so, it's a bit more subtle. But I think as we work through, we'll definitely be able to see what's, what's changed. In a poem like Anthem for Doomed Youth, which we'll look at, the volta shifts us not just in tone, but also in setting. It takes us from the battlefront to the home front. So they can be quite dramatic. I'd like you to, if you were going to, um, suggest that sonnets are usually love poems. I, I find that quite lazy thinking. It's not to say that there haven't been lots of love poems written as sonnets, but equally, there have been many political poems, poems about death, poems about war, written about uh, in the sonnet form. And it's often a way of encapsulating an intense experience. The poet has to fit what they want to explore into 14 lines. Can we start with the subtitle in the title, An Airman's Ecstasy? Would anyone like to offer, I'm thinking Ben might know this from kind of his musical background. Ecstasy, um, we're not talking about the recreational drug or feelings of intense sexualness. Sexualness. <sighs> what, anyone? Ecstasy? We've got it in Dulce as well, an ecstasy of fumbling. Ben? Like it's an, like, um, like an intense experience. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's exactly that. Often, what kind of intense experience? Associated with, with what? Anyone? Think about the last line of the poem. Like yes, often religious. A state of excuse me, <coughs> religious ecstasy. Okay. Oh. Right. So, I'm going to be asking people for contributions. Uh, I might start with Megan and Lauren at the back there. I'm liking the eyelashes today, Lauren. Yeah, they're very jazzy. <laughs> Not jazzy, that's the wrong word. Um, they're very... Now I'm just embarrassing you. They're really nice. <laughs> oh! I have slipped the surly bonds of earth and danced the skies on laughter silvered wings. Right, Megan, Lauren, anything that you know to say you want to comment on? Any AO2 feature, any idea? Megan, start us off. Um, One? What about the laughter silvered wings? Um, yeah. Right, so the personification. Lauren? Yeah, so it's evoking images, angelic images. 
good. I'm going to come across to Erin. What do you notice? Uh, with the stone box, just how it's almost like you trap the earth and then once you've gone up into the sky, it's like it's free. Lovely. So which is the word that lets you know that he's free? Um, it's a bond and then you say like dance because it's like... Right, so he's danced, but there's a word in the first oh, line. Slipped. slipped. I have... So if you... What, go on, that, he's been set free, like the earth's been keeping him captive, yeah, like a captor, yeah, yeah, lovely, surly, what does that mean? Maybe. Ben, you can be a bit surly. Uh, uh, can I? Yeah, you can. <laughs> a bit gruff, a bit bad-tempered. <laughs> so what's happening to the earth there, it's being... Bex? Right, so in AO2 terms, that's personification here as well. Good. Dance the skies. Right, there's something else that you're missing, the sound. Sibilance, yeah. So what does, what does all of that, what effect does the personification, the sibilance... It, yes, go on. I want a bit more for A level though than soft sounding. I feel like he's kind of portrayed quite animalistic. I want to say animalistic, but he seems like he doesn't belong in the earth. Like the whole slipping, it kind of portrays him as like his ideas surrounding war don't fit what's going on on the earth. And right. Like he's, playing, like he's flying. That's kind of his home. So it's but almost like like a bit of philosophy you know, you feel, elevated. You know, all the negative aspects of war and trying to focus on his like. Ecstasy, so to speak, which is what he does in the war. Lovely. That's nice. Archie? Um, I think it's slip. It's, it's, it, it sounds almost accidental in a way. Right. Um, it, it's kind of a moment that he's, that he's taken in throughout through like pure surprise of being there in the first place. Yeah. With the O. The O. Yeah. yeah I have, so like, yeah. Oh, uh, and slip, like you don't yeah. have to slip on purpose. Yes. You know, like, Yes. Ben? The, uh, the choice of the phrase, like the soul and the wind, like implies that his joy is the thing that's taken him up, not, not the wind. Right, soul. yes. Yeah, so it's, it's, his, it's his enjoyment, it's his passion that's elevating yeah, him. The, 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 the order of the word, rather than, than it being silver wings of laughter. Yes. Right. So the syntax is important there. Have we got some enjambment as well? Yes, we have, Mrs. Ashmore. So, what's what what's all of that doing? What kind of, in terms of flight, what's going on here? It's an awakening as the plane. Goes up, lifts off, ascends. Ah. Yeah, ascension. Sunward I've climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sun split clouds and done a hundred things you have not dreamed of. Right. What do you notice that's interesting there? Cameron? The sejura. There's a sejura, yes. Where's it? Where is it? So and well, no, that's on Jormund, isn't it? Because we don't stop. And Jormund is when we continue. No, that that there. That's the sejura, isn't it? So why is there a pause there? What's that making us do? What's it drawing attention to? I've done this, you haven't. So what's it drawing attention to? How special the moment is. How special the moment is. 
does does everyone get to share in this moment, Olivia? No, no, they don't. Right, so that's important. Right, okay, uh, Ellie. What else is important in these lines? Sunward I've climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sun-split clouds. Sibilance and alliteration? Yeah, so we've got sibilance again with the sun-split clouds. What about this joined the tumbling mirth? Quite like a child wiping his Yes, it is. Just hiding in his hood. Thank you. <laughs> I got a new um, I got a new dressing gown as a wedding present from Eddie and it's got a big fluffy hood so my latest game with Oster is that I sit him on my knee facing me and then I put the hood over us over both and I go secret kisses and we have a little secret kiss under the hood that's adorable uh, for the record Oster is 14 months old <laughs> he's not 15 or a dog he is a baby <laughs> um, so tumbling right childlike Mr Tumble it still sounds accidental you don't yeah ever. yeah so there's a mix so there's a real childlike innocence exploration going on here all of this against a backdrop of war remember so when we're thinking about like how typical it is we've got some different things to talk of so Joshua, who is the you? Done a hundred things you have not dreamed of. Sounds like a reader. Yes, go on, but who? Who is the you? Read read is too much of a cop out. I'm guessing because it was to his parents, his parents saying you've never done this before. Right, so that's a pretty obvious thing. Because he sends it to his parents. Broaden it out a little bit, Casey. What kind of people couldn't dream of doing the things he's done? What's happened to your voice? I'm sorry, I'm a bit, <laughs> a bit out of it. You're a bit out of it? Yeah. Why, what's wrong? I'd rather not discuss that. Okay, you are sober. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm right, okay, good. So could the you be civilians thinking of a wartime setting? Yeah. yeah. Don't worry, don't worry, Casey, I won't ask you anything else this lesson. Could it also be conscientious objectors who objected against the war or fighting against it? It could be, it could be. We might have to find some context for that. Oh, that's harsh. <laughs> yeah, and you haven't done it because you're dead. Uh, yeah? Okay. Now, back to this idea that Courtney suggested about how it's like he's not meant for the earth. He's like, I think you're kind of going into like animalistic imagery almost. No, I'm agreeing with you because... Look at how he describes now what wheels and saws in the sky. Birds. birds, yeah, birds wheel and saw. And that's what he's doing. How much does he mention his aeroplane? Yeah, it, it, it's much more about like what he's doing. It's like his vessel. Yeah, yeah, it's secondary, isn't it? He's up there flying. Hovering there, I've chased the shouting wind along and flung my eager craft through footless halls of air. So the eager craft hasn't flung him, he's flung it. What about that word flung? What did you say? Good. Lovely. Olivia? Carefree? Yeah. Purposeful but careless. Like he's doing it. Yeah, if you fling, yeah, there's a difference between aiming something. So you can throw to aim or throw to fling. Not much difference when I throw, to be perfectly honest. Watch out. Ben? Yeah. 
there's like some anti cooler control mm -hmm. uh, from the entire thing. Yeah. I find and I join. Yes. I taste it. My ego is quite possessive. And then further on, like, I top the wings like tied to these grace without my hand. And I have to face the face as well. Lovely. Not come down to me. I have to come to him. Good. Uh, and I'd, I'd like. A lot of this is the semantic field of control is also linked to the ideas of movement, isn't it? So yes, we've got some tumbling and some flinging, but on the whole, this is somebody in charge. What about eager craft? What are we going to say there? Megan, what's that another example of? Eager craft. If the aeroplane is feeling eager, then that's an example of... Personification again, yeah. Archie, what do you make of this bit? Through footless halls of air. Um, so it's, it's, it's sort of being almost untouched. Like yeah. Like yeah, lovely. But why would you have halls in the air? Does it remind you of anything? Yeah. It's like in heaven, it's like a big hall of merriment. Yes, a big hall of merriment. Lovely. Um, is it reminding anybody of a story they might know from their primary school days? What did he say? Biff and Chip join the war effort. Biff and Chip? <laughs> Not join the war, war effort, you don't. Might, might remember Biff and Chip. <laughs> yeah, I think you've put a few ideas together there, Georgia. Um, what a, it, throughout all of this, so what kind of person is, is the speaker? What's his personality like? Kind of, kind of positive. positive? Happy? What are you say, Josh? Biff and Chip create the Nazi regime. <laughs> Biff and Chip create the Nazi regime. See what you've started, Ben. Biff and Chip meet the fascists. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, back to the poem. If you're in a plane and you're talking about touching the face of God, you might have a bit of. Well, no, because that would imply that you think you are God. I was thinking of ambitious. I feel like it's more delusion than ambitious. Right. Like, I feel like there's two words that look at it, like the whole poem, because it could just be like like the scapegoat, I guess. What's what do you mean a scapegoat for his true feelings? I, I don't know if it's just like my bias opinion on religion, but I don't I don't necessarily care much for religion. So when I kind of see stuff like this, I kind of think like oh religion. I don't know if I right, no that it. no, but look, okay. So so put aside your own religious beliefs and if we just said touch the face of God as a metaphor yeah. What what else is he saying? It's, it it links more with this thing about the um, the footless halls of air. Like, like, like his lack of fear of death. Like, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. More in the moment that he's had this unique experience. Also, I think that he's like he appreciates it. Is that kind of like the ecstasy? Yes, it's exactly that. Oh, that was a bit high. Yes, a bit high pitched. So what happens after our volta? Well, the sky becomes a delirious burning blue. I'm not going to go through this um, sestet with you so that you've got things that you can bring to the poem. We might... Uh, you, uh, but I would, I'm going to guide you to looking at delirious burning blue, the lifting mind, and the untrespassed spirit trespassed sanctity of space 
I'm going to pause it there. 